Many people have asked me to review the $150 ANET A8 3D printer kit. Well, I never got one, but I did get this. This is the ANET E10. Now, this is like a $360 printer. You can get it on sale for just under $300. Bucks. But some have referred to this as the CR10 killer. But they're two totally different printers. This one's a lot smaller. It's just totally different in many, many ways. So I'm just going to review this. I'm going to unbox it, put it together, run some prints out, and show you how it went, and give you my full review on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you every week by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. When I opened the box, I found two sample rolls of filament, and I hate these. Just give me a small spool. And then it had this build tack material with a 3M backing and then a printed manual with color pictures. This was nice. So that was the first layer. And then when I lifted this off, then there was the bed. And this thing looked pretty complete. But there was a putty knife stuck in the corner here and then a box of parts. And I'll go through this real quickly. It's got a uh, S micro SD card, a Bowden tube, some Allen wrenches, some screws for assembling it, a uh, USB cable, tie straps, and then a screwdriver. And the bottom assembly itself came out completely, mostly assembled, really. This thing is pretty solid. And when I flipped it over, I could see that there were two bolts to hold the belt. And then the belt itself was tied, tie strapped so it wouldn't slide. The bearings were just basic bearings. I found a lot of cheap printers. And then a stop switch already mounted. So that was the bed. And then the next thing was the power supply and electronics in a box. And there's no connectors here. This is all one unit. Even the hot end piece here is one unit. So that's kind of troublesome. I'd like a connector on there. But then when I dug a little deeper, here's a power cord and a 3D printed spool holder. That's unique and see how that works. But the metal bracket, so just the holder was 3D printed. And then the upper assembly, which had the X carriage, this seemed pretty solid and pretty complete. It had metal brackets, uh, looked very promising. This seemed very, very solid. And when I looked at it, the couplings were good and uh, the extruder here had machined parts, not plastic. So that seemed good. You know, that seemed like it would hold up. The hot end was mounted directly to the bracket, which was strange. There was no gap between it. And they did give you some spare parts, a spare hot end, some spare screws, and then the screws and nuts that you needed to assemble this thing. The hot end heater element and temperature sensor were part of the harness, so I got to slide those in. So that's, that's a little different. But I did like it had an on-off switch, and I pulled the fuse out and checked it was a 3-amp fuse. So that's good. It's got some protection. When I took it apart, though, I didn't see any external FET driver. So it's relying on the FET that's on the motherboard. But look at this wiring to the power connector. These wires are about ready to break. This is really, really marginal. So then I dug deeper into the board that's included. This is a separate picture. I tried to find a schematic. I can't find fusing on this board anywhere. It does not look like it's got any fusing, and that's bad. Because then you're relying on that single 3-amp fuse. Not good. It is an 8-bit board. I could find on mine. I zoomed in an AT Mega 128. So it's basically an Arduino board. And there is a fan in there to blow across the motherboard, specifically at the FETs. Now the FETs had these push-on heat sinks. Totally unacceptable. This should be a lot better heat sink for these guys. It's fine on the stepper motor driver chips because they don't get quite as hot, but those FETs, they need a lot better heat sink. And it's got a 20 amp, 12 volt, so 240 watt power supply. Not huge, but this electronics was marginal. So now I was ready to assemble. It already had the T-brackets installed with T-nuts. I just had to slide down the assembly onto those T-nuts and then tighten them up. But I had to actually back them off and wiggle them to get those things to turn. It took me like five tries to get this to go. So it wasn't easy. And then I installed the screw on the bottom. This should have been first and then the T-brackets. But this they had us assemble it this way. And then I installed the bracket for the spool holder. That just screwed to the top of the power supply. And then it was a 3D printed spool holder with uh, 3D printed nuts. That tightened up fine. Actually, it worked, worked just fine. Uh, the heat element slid into the hot end block, and you just push the temperature sensor into a hole. There's no screw, though, to hold that guy in place. So you got to hope it's making good contact, I guess. There is one set screw to hold the heat element in place. And so I guess that's how the temperature sensor works. Now, the heater 
uh, block for the hot end was mounted directly to the plate. There was no gap between it. So that's a big heat sink now, that plate. So this will be interesting. And then the fan itself was in a box similar to, looks the same as a CR-10. Two screws to hold that in place. And then there's a separate fan for cooling the filament. So it does have two fans, so that's nice. So after that, I was ready to install the rest of the electronic wiring. The switches themselves just had these push-on connectors, and a couple of mine had lost the insulating material. I found one in the box, but the worst part was the connectors for the stepper motors. These things are so weak, very, very weak. They're not going to last. They're going to break over time. And then to add to that, I got it all assembled, and it wasn't until I tried to home it that I found out the extruder and x-axis were mis labeled they had the wiring backwards so i had to reverse those guys and then uh, i installed the connector for the heated bed and this was actually nice it was a nice connector but the problem is they put it right in the center of the heated bed so if i strap it to the back like this when the thing goes forward the wiring is going to hit on the motor so i had to find a new way to route the wiring and what i actually did is i routed it underneath the bed around the bracket and then tied strapped it there i don't know if this is the best but it's better than you know what i was looking at why they didn't offset that connector i have no idea but this is what i did to keep that wiring because this is the wiring you don't ever want to short so after that i realized the belt for the x-axis was really loose so i needed to tighten this guy but if i if you look close here the t-net that's holding it is right at the edge of the the extrusion but I was able to tighten it, and I was able to get a couple teeth to grab on the T-nut. Very, very marginal. Now, when I tried to home it, this is what I got. Listen. I had one stepper motor that was spinning because the coupling was loose, and the other one was grinding. So I had to loosen up the screws on this uh, nut here. And then I could get it to home, and it homed really smooth. So kind of kludgy how I had to fix that, but I got it to work and then it was it was really really smooth so i was ready to heat this thing up and try it out the bed heated up to 55 really quick but the hot end only could get to 202 and then it started dropping so trying to do a sample print it wouldn't even get the temperature and this took a while i sped this up and i never got an under temp warning so i mean just probably got under temp over temp disabled like the ana did on the a a8 so that's really bad so just to get a print going i decided to just throw some tape over the fan because this thing was really blowing hard and that seemed i just left a little gap and that seemed to work i allowed it to get up to 210 i had lowered the uh, setting for that and then it could start a print and so i had it print my chest pawn which i do on a lot of my reviews the bed level i had off a little bit so the first couple layers were off but it finally printed and it did a really good job on this chest pawn it looks smooth for what I went through, I was surprised at how good this looked. So then I decided to try one of their sample prints, and that was the uh, pyramid. And I got the bed leveled right, and it was laying down a beautiful first layer, and then it printed this. This is looks this looks really good. The detail on the stairs and the upper portion was excellent. So I tried a benchy, and I had the retraction settings all messed up, so it looks terrible. But sides of it are really smooth. But I noticed while I was printing the bed adjustment was hitting on one of the steppers this has got to be fixed before i go further these these got to be turned or something and the wiring has got to be redone because the heated element uh wiring was just too short so i got to fix all this before i do any more printing so i actually ran out of time to do an even deeper review there's things i can improve on this thing and make it better and that's kind of the point this is actually a good machine to hack but at 299 dollars or more that's an expensive hack and some have complained about the 3D printed parts not being as good. And I used to think that way until I had a Prusa MK2S, which is like 50% of the parts are 3D printed. And that thing prints amazing. So it's not just the 3D printed parts. It's just there's a lack of engineering that have gone into this. This was rushed to market, in my opinion. But it's got a lot of potential. But $299 is a bit high, in my opinion. So, I don't know. You be the judge as far as price. But... I like it, but I don't love it, so I can't fully recommend it. I'd rather have a CR-10. The P.O. Poly bed material giveaway that was in the last film of Friday, you still got a chance to enter. Go back, watch the video, leave a comment, and you got to be a subscriber. I'm going to announce the winners in the next Filament Friday video. 
So that's it for this week. If you like what I'm doing here, check out these videos that are popping up. Click on them or click on the Patreon logo and donate a dollar a month. It really helps. But if nothing else, click on that Chep logo and subscribe. That way you don't miss an episode. That's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.